It's all about art, art, all about art, art, all about art. With David Reed, all about art, Tom Galvin, about art, and Joe Moore, about art. Hey, we're back. How about the slush budget presents? Oh. Greetings, <laughs> greetings, Hi. you guys. Greetings, everybody out there. Hey, happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday, 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 indeed. Great to be back. How are y'all yeah. doing? Good. It's been a really nice, windy day. I love oh, the windy yes. weather out there. It's Just really picked up this afternoon. Yeah, kind of breezy. The weather temperature's a little hot, but it's breezy and it's oh. just good. So, so I wanted to talk about the weather a little while so that people can understand the depth and the interesting, complex things we talk about on the show. So. Well, what is uh, the intersection of art and weather? We haven't explored that. Um, uh, you know, I, it, I, has a, it has a real drastic impact in preschools. Uh, the wind actually causes all the hairs on your body and the back of your neck to get stimulated, and they have their nerve endings go straight to your animus, which causes the flight-fight response to be continually activated all the time. That's why the wind makes you feel so crappy. So with musicians, it messes with their mojo. So, Interesting. But art and weather also come together with like the comic weather guys that, that have this little thing that says F-A-W-G and they slap it on the board and, you know, they drop the con co clown costumes or whatever it is. Or when, uh, you know, the art and they re render themselves ridiculous to, to attract an audience. <laughs> and, uh, so I like to think of that as art. That but, it is. Um, That's performance art, indeed. Yeah, but moving away from the weather and getting into what we're all about, this is all about arts. And uh, yeah. Joe Moy, David Reed, and I'm Tom Galvin. Um, it says Gay Galvin. That's because I'm on her uh, uh, Facebook. You're, I don't you're know. a modern age male, Tom. Yeah. Not a and he's a happy yeah. guy. He's every and time he is, I see him. I'm also a very happy guy. Yeah. Uh, would, can we, we every every uh, time that we do this show, uh, I've researched along with my crack team of researchers, some aspect of the art that's, to me, just a little bit weird, a little bit unusual. Yes. We've covered a lot of things. We've covered uh, the guy who uh, nailed a banana to the board and sold it for $250,000 and then made a couple of copies because it sold so well. <laughs> and we've uh, we've talked oh, about how m &M was, <laughs> m &Ms was used to uh, capture thieves mm -hmm. and great art. We've covered a lot of ground, and today, um, Weird News, the title of Weird News is, What Did They Leave Me? Wow. That was what my earbud falling out. Title. Look at that, was, that was my earbud falling out. It may have sounded like a percussive instrument, but That's it was just weird. my earbud. So getting into this, this is an interesting fact. Of all the celebrities who have ever lived, an outstanding percentage, in fact, 100%, have either died or will die in the future. So think about that. Actually, celebrities are much uh, like the rest of uh, the world's population. Most of us just actually lose, we leave our, in our wills, we leave things to the people we love, our family members and our valuables, and we sort that all out. And do, but that's, there are exceptions. And so let's look at some of the last wills and testaments of some of the, uh, some eccentric celebrities. <laughs> Shakespeare requested that his wife be left his second best bed. Why not his best bed? He wasn't using his best bed. Napoleon Bonaparte requested that after his death, he should be shaved and his hair divided among friends. And who could resist a handful of a dead man's hair? Wow. And this is really, this is the kind of present for the guy who's got everything. Yeah. Maybe lucky and get the Bonaparte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he may be, if you can call that lucky, but you know, uh, I want to move on now to Eris, the Eris. Eleanor E. E. Ritchie. Eleanor E. Ritchie. Not necessarily oh, yeah. all that famous. I, I'm sure neither of you have ever heard of her. I know I never had. But she left her $4.5 million fortune to her dogs oh. when she died in 1968. She had 150 dogs. Oh, well, that's, you know, that's a good split. 
I would it's, be, a, I would... it's a pretty good split, but a few of the dogs were not as happy as they might have been. And so, of course, uh, they contested the will. <laughs> Fred Bauer, founder of Pringles Potato Chips, didn't want a coffin or an urn. His family honored his wish to be cremated and buried in a Pringles can. That could be him right there. That could, that's, that's both of them. That's Fred Bauer and Fred Bauer. Tupac expressed a desire for his friends to smoke his ashes. They actually did. Several of his closest friends mixed his ashes with a joint and smoked, and you know, into a joint and smoked it. Okay. Now, you guys, I've never shared this before, but I was one of those guys I smoked in that joint. And suddenly I, I went from being a white folk singer to a, to a rapper. Uh, it was just the most incredible thing. I'm going to have to learn that song. Finally, while not particularly famous, Thomas Shoebridge, a California rancher, left 29,000 stock shares in the local electric company to his dogs. That meant that the dogs were regularly present at board of directors meetings. And it occurred to me that if the utility company was PG&E, that would explain a lot. The summary, the, summary song, the summary song this week is Pray for the Dead and Hope for a Fortune. Pray for the dead in the hopes they'll leave you stuff Like ashes in a joint, everybody take a puff You expect a fortune being Napoleon's heir How's it feel when you get Nothing but a hank of hair. Pray for the dead when you left your second best bed. Pray for the man stuffed inside a Pringles can. You were certain you'd be wealthy. It must have been a bitch when you're left without a penny while the dogs get stinking rich. Weird news. Uh, yeah. You are May you're too. incredible. Incredible. Pretty weird, Tom. Tom. Pretty How do you weird. work second best bed into a verse? I don't I did I, well I, that's why I stumbled over the line. I wanted I I could have not stumbled, but I stumbled to show you how difficult that actually that was. That was very yeah. difficult. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, like so. uh a yeah. uh, what's a triple lut. Tri yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such wordplay. Bravo. <laughs> Well, uh, okay, so that puts a weird, weird uh, news to bed for an another two weeks. And uh, wow. uh, next time, I'm gonna, I think we're going to explore the strange pets of celebrities. Do you celebrity. already have? Do you already have one in the can? I was I'm just you. looking at and looking yeah. at. Uh, you know, I have a dog. I got, I got a couple cats, and that's kind of yeah. what a lot of people have something. But you don't have a monkey. I, I don't have an. I don't have an ocelot. You got to you know? be really famous to have a monkey. You know, I, I I envy Mike Tyson for his tiger that he carries right. around, but but uh, I don't have one. Michael Jackson and, uh, had that chimpanzee. Uh, he had the baboon. Yeah, yeah. He had the uh, yeah something. Well, yeah. he had something. Yeah, he had something. It was in a diaper too. <laughs> hey, William okay, Randolph well. first had his own zoo up there at San Simeon. You know, zebra. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Some of them are still there. He had his whole thing. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So moving on to, yeah. we're going to be talking about what's going on around the arts community uh, tonight. That's uh, David will be informing us about yeah. that. And uh, we also have a very, very wonderful special guest tonight, uh, today. Mm -hmm. uh, we love this guy, uh, John Paris. David, you want to say anything about Yeah, a uh, dear up? friend. I've known John for a number of years. John is a, a, a remarkable musician, pianist, accordion player. Uh, maybe he'll tell us a little bit about his early days back in Pennsylvania being the bell of the ball when he'd bring out the accordion at different topoca parties. And um, a composer um, and a recently retired music educator. So John's uh, played a couple of concerts a year live uh, for us at the Burroughs Theater in Marysville for, for many years running now. And he's got a very devoted following. He's just always active, always doing something new, lots of accolades and just some beautiful, beautiful music that he's... Uh, shared uh, with the community and, and his community being nationwide, if not international at this point. So uh, we're anxious to get John back in the theater. In the meantime, he is preparing for a virtual concert uh, 
for us that we'll talk about uh, during our conversation. So, John, you out there? Come on on and join us. John Paris, ladies and gentlemen. Our there good he is. Beaming in <laughs> live from the uh, virtual studio at home, John? Yes, I am. That's that's the real studio, though, right? This is the real studio. Yeah, yeah it's not just a backdrop like, like I use. No, no, this is the real deal. Great to see you. <laughs> Which is in the Great. process of being mucked out. That's all right. That's yeah. all right. Wonderful. So, how have you been doing? What do you What have you been doing after retirement? You, you keeping busy? Uh, ultra. Yeah, it's it's been it's been amazing, really, uh, because I have time now to do things I could never do before. You know, I hardly had time to practice for a concert, and now mm. I can just walk in to the studio, or I have a keyboard in my bedroom. I just walk over and sit down. Oh. And it's been it's been a blast, you know. And uh, God, there's so much that have happened since I've seen you. I mean, physically, I, I have my cataracts removed. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I can see clearly. Oh. Oh, that's huge. So, so now you can tell that there are black keys and white keys. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. I, I kept getting confused about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. And, anyway, be a breakthrough. I've taken up cooking uh, because I have to. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's actually pretty edible. And uh, I'm studying uh, Italiano because of oh, Molto bene, huh? Yeah, molto bene. Good. Yeah. yeah, so. And manja, yeah. I know how to say eat. Manja, manja, right? Manja, manja. That's my favorite. <laughs> and uh, so I've been writing a lot. I've been writing a lot. And besides that, uh, I've been hired to record accompaniments for singers in Minneapolis. Oh. Um, I'm working with a friend who was in Badfinger. There was an AR and R man for Capital, and um, I have a Christmas tune I dreamt back in the '70s, and it's a beautiful piece. I'm not bragging; I'm just it is. And uh, I sent him a uh, demo with four part harmony, and he's going to actually do the four part harmony for me. Wow! And it's going to be cool. Yeah. Get so. Refresh my memory, John. Bad thing was that if you want it, here it is. Come and get it. Okay, yeah, they, they were a good band. Yeah, that was, that was a good band. They, yeah, they yeah, had some hits. Good. He's really he's busy. You know, he's he's working with uh, uh, one of the '60s artists, uh, Peter Peter and Gordon, or I can't remember the name. Oh, right. uh, Peter, uh, Peter Asher. Yeah. Peter Asher was a producer for James Taylor and Linda Ronstadt, and he was a team of Peter and Gordon. Right. And their big hit yeah. was a remake of Buddy Buddy Holly's True Love Ways. Right. They had a big hit with True Love Ways and some other things. But, yeah, he's also working with Al Jardine. From, oh. Boys, so. from Beach Boys, yeah. Yeah, he's a talented dude, you know, so yeah. I can't wait to hear his voice on the tune. You, uh, you, yourself, John, are uh, a heavy hitter. Um, you... Um, you won some awards, some significant awards. You performed at Carnegie Hall. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're all over um, the uh, social media and ways to access your music, music uh, which we want to talk about, let people know about your presence on Spotify, Reverb Nation, and, and I'm guessing other sources too, where people can hear your music and we'll be hearing some of your music today. Um, but what... What have you recorded since the last time we talked? You you had a recording when you were on our show when we were at the radio station uh, last year. Uh, there's I see on your website some things since. You want to talk about recent things that have been well, the most recent put out there was uh, Jazzy Kid songs too, uh, and that's going to be the last one of those. Although I could probably keep doing those, you know, because there's so much kids music out there. Uh, but right now, I'm working on a an album called uh, Acceptance, mm -hmm. and the music came from, of course, what's been going on, you know, the pandemic, and um, you know, the need to just deal with things as they are. Mm -hmm. Don't don't argue with it. It is what it is. Accept it. Move on. You know. And um, I also have part of another album uh, that I'm working on which came about because I wrote things that weren't in the modality of acceptance, you know? So right now I've got two things cooking. Going at one time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Plus I'm going to do a, a greatest hits 
Christmas album. Yeah. Oh, right. All right. Yeah. yeah. I love that whole concept of acceptance. And I guess this is your, uh, when you, with the background of the pandemic and everything we've experienced and processed in our own individual ways. But so this is kind of your, uh, not homage, but your uh, reaction, I guess, to it. But it's, it's like one of those things where you just, outside of keeping yourself and your family safe, there's really not a heck of a lot you can do. It's not like you can go out and protest or, or go on strike or whatever. You, you have to accept it and right. move on, move forward, and, and however you do that. Yeah, and I think, you know, you find the blessings in everything. I mean, I know it was it's difficult for a lot of people. For me, it was a blessing because mm. it was the impetus to retire. And now I get to spend a lot of time with my wife, who's in late-stage dementia. Uh, I have time to write. I have time to exercise. I have time to prepare food that's actually healthy. Mm. So there's so much to be gained in my in my life from it. And, um, and I always look for the blessing in things because there's always something there, you know, for us to learn. Here, here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That that connects to something. You won, uh, You were on the top 10 list of, uh, of uh, uh, the New Age uh, meditative. meditative list. You were, you were in the top 10 on that. Um, and I guess it opens up uh, some questions about how you use music to chill out, calm down, keep yourself in a quiet zone or in a peaceful zone. You have challenges in your life and, and you have a lovely wife who, who's in need of some care and some assistance. And you are uh, now doing that single handedly since uh, uh, you know, some, there's been some uh, her caregiver is not doing well herself. And so, so many things within your home and rising to the occasion to deal with all that. Um, how do you stay chilled out and how does music factor into that? Well, uh, that's a case of acceptance. Um, you know, when this started, uh, I had no clue how to deal with things because things that were normal uh, don't exist anymore. And it's a constant state of ad adaptation. Mm -hmm. And um, there would be things that would happen where it would be upsetting, you know, because she would do things that were mess up things and you know make uh make problems and now it's just like it is what it is clean up the mess chill you know mm -hmm. and there's no point to getting upset about it because it's out of her control and um i'm coming from a i must say i've learned tons about patient patience and divine love you know like loving the soul no matter what's going on. And so it's been, it's been a real journey for me. The music, of course, reflects all of that. Um, I wrote that album called The Long Goodbye. The Long mm. Goodbye is a, it's a, you know, a name for uh, dementia. And all the music on there came about because I would be doing something for her and there would be a song, you know, something happening musically in my head and I began to realize that these were the things I should record. So I actually wrote a whole album because of that. And now this particular album, Acceptance, is very introspective. It's it's not my usual jazzy, you know, uh, rhythmic stuff at all. It's more. Uh, can can we hear something from it, Alex? Our, uh, Alex is our unsung hero behind the Alex and Shante are our sound sound people um I, i'm just wanting to know if uh if we can get a list of things up or if there's something we can play from acceptance so people can get a little taste of what fine music uh, what a fine musician we have with us today that would be a goodbye old friend that's the only thing i've actually shared yet yeah, yeah I, I would like to hear goodbye old friend and while if, if alex if that's a possibility for you while while you respond to that or let me know that is possible or isn't uh, I did want to ask about Bobby uh, Bobby Van Rooy, about which about whom you wrote uh, "Goodbye, Old Friend." Uh, could you tell us what inspired that song? And hopefully, we can. Uh, Alex is searching. He just put up that he's searching for that song, "Goodbye, Old Friend." Yeah. I know it's on your Facebook page, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's easily accessible for our show. But can you tell us a little about uh, 
And he also has the acceptance flyer that we're going to get up there too. Uh, I'm reading some things from from our sound from Alex Asena, who's telling me that we'll have something up. Yeah, here's a poster for the acceptance. That's May 14th at 7 p.m., uh, which is next Saturday. No, next Saturday, next Saturday would be the eighth. Oh, no, two, yeah, two weeks, two weeks out. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks. It's on okay. a Friday night. Yeah, what am I thinking? Sorry. Two weeks yeah, out. free free concert. Just uh, jump on to Yuba Center Arts uh, Facebook page or our YouTube channel, and and uh, you'll be able to see and hear John. Uh, so, Bobby Van Rooy, tell us a little bit about him, uh, John, Bobby if you could. Was, Bobby was, you know, when, when I had my group, it was called Atlantis, and we toured all across the U.S., all across Canada, I spent a lot of time in Vegas, Reno, Tahoe, back to Atlantic City. So you would be driving coast to coast. And you would work cities in between, like Chicago, you know. And uh, Bobby, a uh, really super talented guy, really nice guy. And we were like brothers, you know, really. Uh, because when you're on the road like that, and he was, the group took various incarnations through the 13 years. But he was there through... 90% of it. And uh, the only reason he left was he had his second child mm. on the road. And that, of course, wouldn't work, you know. But um, we were we were like brothers, really. And he had emailed me the first week of December. And he sent me a really loving email and telling me how much I had taught him and he loved me and of course, I wrote back the same thing, and I've I answered him a week later, and no answer back. Mm -hmm. Well, he had been performing with a, a unit called Barlene's Supper Show or something like that uh, in Arizona, and he contracted COVID, mm. and so the COVID led to kidney disease, or, you know, breaking of his kidneys with and pneumonia. And then he had a massive heart attack and he was gone. Mm. And so I was just sitting down at the keyboard and playing with the same. And it was coming out and I was realizing it was about him. And so I called the goodbye old friend. And uh, we just, you know, when you're on the road like that, you're together. Mm. I mean, sometimes 24 seven, because it, you might get a house to live together in. And so we were very, very close. And I mean, it was 43 years ago that I broke up the band. But we've uh -huh. maintained all that time. And yeah. um, every now and then he'd come into Sacramento and we'd get together for lunch. <clears throat> and so there was a lot of love there. Mm. I'm not sure. Uh, that's a pretty touching story. I'm not sure we're going to be able to access it right now, but I would... I think it would be great if we could hear something and I'm, I'm going to, um, yeah, uh, Alex can't find that one, but Alex, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, the songs, uh, jazz for children songs. Number two, one of your many albums, uh, many CDs and now accessible through, uh, uh, Spotify and other sources. Jazzy kids songs. You did a concert a couple of years ago, John, where you incorporated a lot of the kids songs. Maybe it was, am I getting it wrong? I've been to three or four of your concerts and one of them was exclusively dedicated to the, the kids songs. Right. That was just the first one. Jazz mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. yeah. And you had one from this that you asked if we could play or sure. that you was your preference. Um, and which one was that, John? Uh, the Ansco Marching. The ants go marching. Alex, can you spin that for us? Now you're going to hear the left hand playing the drum part. <laughs> marching drum.
All right. That's good. It's yeah. Um, this, so this is a fun. This is a fun uh, album. I'm sure, like the first one was, which I love for for kids, but it's also so enjoyable for adults. Uh, if you don't have kids, don't hesitate to buy this music or to acquire this music because it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. Yeah, yeah. they, they kind of got off into the bushes a couple of times in the in the arrangement. So you hear it gets a little crazy. I'm probably going to play <laughs> them actually at the concert. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. Did we lose David? Yeah. Oh. Yep. All right. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Somewhere. Yeah. Um, also, I, I was listening uh, today. I love Black uh, Black Boots Boogie. Yeah. And I, you know, that's on. Do you do you remember what album that's on, John? Do you remember? Because uh, we've got all of them up here, uh, but I don't know how many Alex can. I think the Joy of Christmas, I believe. Joy of Joy of Christmas. Uh, let's just, I, if we can just task Alex with, you know, just. Maybe arbitrarily anything else, but but if that's a possibility, there we go. Right off, we got a crack team here. Yeah, boy, it's good. That's good. These are snippets, obviously snippets of, uh, of whole pieces, but uh, it's yeah. just so much fun. Uh, it's, if you have a chance to get in and watch this formidable pianist, uh, just watching his hands fly across the keyboards. It's just <laughs> keyboard. It's uh, And now that he doesn't have cataracts, he, he can recognize <laughs> which is the white, which is the black key. And uh, <laughs> so it's just going to be even better, yeah, even well, that better. Was, that was both. So, you know, I actually wrote that in five minutes, one take. <laughs> Hey, John, you said you were going to put together a Greatest Hits Christmas album. That's all your music? Yeah, uh, things that I've recorded. On, I have uh, three Christmas albums. Oh. That's going to take uh, you know, what I think are the best, uh, redo the sound, mm. and then probably add to it you know, with something more, another original. But uh, the songs that I recorded were mostly um, public domain. You know, you don't have to mess with mm -hmm. all the uh, rights and everything, plus stuff that I've written. Okay. Yeah, you've got some originals too, right? What is it, the well, Santa was, Santa Boogie or something? The, yeah. One of my the, favorites. The Santa Shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle, not Boogie, shuffle. Yeah. I'm also going to have my buddy do the vocal on that one and uh, add instrumentation. So, yeah. well, the, are you, uh, in any of your recording, how are you, have you recorded with a rhythm section, John, during this whole thing? No, because um, I, I didn't have the ability to get out with my, you know, teaching and my wife and all that. Um, and frankly, I did that, you know, I've done all that, you know, so now, and I can do it myself now with sampled instruments, if, you know, if I want to go there. And because I know what I want to feel, but if, I, if you can't get it, uh, musicians of a certain level, it's pointless, you know. Correct. And, and yeah. I really don't want to spend time coaching a lot of people now, you know. Yeah. Do you record do you record everything in your home studio? Is I do. That right? You do, right yeah. Here. Yeah. Right here. Nice. And even piano. Uh, I'm using a program now that uh, cost me 600 bucks. But <laughs> they deep sampled a Steinway so that each key has 18,000 samples just on one key, you know, and it's it's Sounds pretty good. Yeah, well, I sent I sent uh, I sent some of the new stuff that I had written using it to uh, 
my buddy, Fred Lipsius, who was with Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and he was always bugging me about recording with a real piano. So I said, hey, I recorded this on a Stangway. He says, about time I heard you on a real piano. <laughs> <laughs> to fake him out, I know it's good. How <laughs> fun. How fun. I listened to Polly Wild. Polly Waddle Doodle, Polly Wally Doodle, yeah. John, before the show started today. Yeah. Now, I would not go out of my way to, you know, check out a cover of Polly Wally Doodle. <laughs> uh, and I, when I saw the title, I just thought, well, let's check this out. It kicks butt. All day. <laughs> Polly Wally Doodle <laughs> just kicks butt. And uh, so uh, if for any of you out there streaming, I don't know, if, uh, and I'm putting a whole lot of pressure on Alex, and I don't mean to do that. I don't know if you'd be able to find that right it's, now. But should you be, can all, pardon me? Did should you be say right so? The other. Yeah, it should be easy to find. Oh, it should be in the same. Uh, same deal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You could, yeah. So it's Polly Wally Doodle. This is Pokey Pokey. <laughs> Polly Wally Doodle. Different take on Polly Wally. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> different take, different different spin. I um, I thought Alex said wound it down, volume down, but that was just my earbud falling out. So I hope I, I'm sorry if I cut that off prematurely, but I just wanted people to get a sample of how much fun this is. Um, well, and, me, you know, kids are happy souls, you know, mm -hmm. and you take that music and the thing I love about kids songs or Christmas songs they're very easy to reharmonize and change the rhythm of them, you know, and make it into a whole new composition. So uh, I have to, I, I enjoy doing that a lot. Yeah. I'm actually going to play um, Danny Boy at the concert. I don't know why, but it, it was like, I want to play that song. Okay. You know, and then we'll talk about Chick Corea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, what, what have you learned from Chick Corea, both musically and maybe in terms of his way of life, his choices, his uh, Scientology or whatever it might be? What about what about Chick Corea has influenced? Well, first of all, he's a beautiful soul. I mean, you know, he, he dealt from a very high level of consciousness. Um, he would not let anybody in his band if they did drugs. Mm. He'd just kick them out. It wouldn't work. You know, he kept his environment really clean. I mean, he's super creative. I mean, his music comes from a whole different level. And I mean, I don't know of too many other players that could even get close to what he did. Um, but I love one thing he said. He said, music is not about technique. It's about communication with the audience. And to me, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just going to be up there impressing yourself, you're not, you're not doing anything for the audience, you know? And when somebody walks into my concert, I want them to leave feeling better than they did when they walked in, yeah. you know? I know, I know you guys know that you do the same yeah. thing. Yeah. But well, I've, exper I've experienced that three or four times, leaving your concerts uh, feeling better than when I walked in. It's Thank always you. a high, it's always a high, yeah. it's a good high. Yeah, well, and to me, it's a journey, you know? And I don't want you to sit there and be left in the dust, you know? So I want to take the audience with me on that journey. You know, that's very, very important. And so I'm always constantly, I guess it's from, I was the leader of the band forever, you know, and always read the room, you know, to see what was working with the audience, what wasn't, and, you know, being very attuned to the connection you're making. 
So that's really important to me, you know. And oh, Chick yeah. was that way. I mean, Chick would sit down and just like do this amazing stuff, but the audience was with him. I actually took my wife to see him, and she was more of a country type person. She mm. loved her music, and we we walked into the concert, sat down, and they started. And like two minutes in, she started to cry. I mm. thought, oh crap, we're gonna have to leave, you know. <laughs> And I said, why are you crying? He said, because that music has so much honesty in it. Hmm. It was like, that said it all. You know? all right. hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. There's a, there's, it's a, I don't know if you're, uh, maybe you're familiar with uh, uh, Oliver Sacks' book uh, um, about people with uh, dementia, um, yeah. musical therapy, I think it's called. Right. And uh, he he gave an example of a quartet uh, that had been four guys who are now all of advanced, two were advanced stage and two had passed away. And so the quartet was kept a while along for a while with the uh, with the remaining uh, man, his partner and the remaining man's daughter and son in law. And then the that remaining man, he developed dementia and uh, Alzheimer's grew and he was kind of. Uh, uncommunicative in general until Oliver Sacks brought came in and and got assembled the remaining partner and the two people and they just started singing their parts and I, what whatever standard it was I don't know and the man stood up and started and just grabbed his part knew his harmony yeah. knew where he was supposed to be and right. in that moment Sacks describes that there was pure lucidity there was pure clarity right. in his eyes in his face in his voice and he was done singing and then he went back to the chair. But do you, you know, have your, does your wife kind of ever reason that's a, reminded me when your wife said that. Yeah. Well, my wife, you know, I mean, she was an amazing person. She flew planes, you know, I mean, little planes, uh, raised Arabian horses. I mean, she was a dynamite speaker. Uh, oh. And she wrote a beautiful book called Love Your Age at Every Age. And she could read the spiritual energy in around her always. And she could look at a person and know if they were, you know, real, the real deal or not. But uh -huh. um, why did I tell you that? Okay. Anyway, uh, her love of music wasn't what I was doing, but I'll be talking to somebody like my ex-manager and all of a sudden she'll break into a melody that is just gorgeous. I mean, mm -hmm. she's hearing it and singing it, and I'm thinking, man, where'd that come from? I mean, I wish I could capture that. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. And how about Tony Bennett, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. It's been about four or five years since he was diagnosed, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just... Lynn Campbell, too. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. That yeah. last call Greg Lynn Campbell did. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it just went through you. Yeah. But I was going to say, I read a book called uh, This Is Your Brain on Music. Like, I, uh -huh. <laughs> and the guy who wrote it is a, a, he's a psych, um, psych, you know, he's into the uh, psychology stuff. Huh. But, um, he has a doctorate, but he also uh, was a record producer, mm. and a musician, and they did some like amazing stuff. You know, like they 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 plugged into uh, either a baboon or a monkey's brain. And they played part of a song, but they stopped it before it ended. And the monkey's brain finished it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. he was talking about the fact that music is not in one area of the brain. It's all through the brain. Mm -hmm. That's why it doesn't disappear, you know. Yes. Yeah. One of my favorite things to tell parents of children is like you're, when you sing and dance or sing and use your hands, it, your whole brain is it lit up the yes, whole thing. Exactly. So. It's it's a there's a healing such a healing quality to music and of course in your situation when you hear something like that from your wife it's just right. so honest. You yeah. know, there's a power in your general love for music. All of a sudden it goes to a different level of powerful yeah. music is I would think. Yeah, it's like gee, I wish I could. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I I don't want to go too much into what I'm doing, but I'm doing a project with a right wing, well, with a guy who politically 
he and I, uh, my friend John Lemerand, who was a lead singer in a band I was associated with, and we've been friends for years, but we've diverged politically and gone in such terribly different directions with maybe hard feelings or why can they think, why could, he, why could I think that way? Why does back and forth? So I wrote a song called uh, uh, The Great Divide, and he's singing uh, lead and rhythm guitar, and I'm playing, I'm gonna sing harmony and, uh, and, and our finger pick style guitar to make it a, put it something out there that, you know, what, we're divided, we're gonna divide everything. Are we gonna divide music, love for music? Are we gonna divide our, our ideas about spiritual growth? Are we gonna divide our ideas about education, about openness, about all this stuff? Can't we start just talking to each other? And so, you know, uh, do you do you use lyrics? Uh, do you use music right now? And 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 does it help you get over the kind of the great divide in this country right now? Your own thoughts and your own end. Absolutely, Trust because it's brought me to this degree of acceptance. You know, there are members of my family that are totally on the other side of the of the divide. Yeah, it's in our band that were totally on the other side of the divide. But we met in Vegas two years ago, and none of that happened. You know. Yeah. That's we, the thing. When, when mm -hmm. none of that happens and we're more yeah. than just our political beliefs. Right. And it's just, what's the point of that? You know, yeah. I, have, you know yeah. my brother, I have one brother remaining out of three and uh, he's on the other side and he would, you know, bring stuff up and I just bust him, you know, I just, read, you know, turn it into a joke. You yeah. Know? yeah. And, and now we're past all that, you know, I mean, it's like, Love is love. You don't have to get caught up in all that stuff, you know? Yeah, and when you recognize the dividing lines, the things that do divide us, there's no reason to dwell on it or yeah. just go to the things that unite us. Right. And I think that's, uh, you do that with your music so much. You you know, you bring people together. Your concerts are always just big love fests. Everybody's just, uh, just smiling and grinning and having a great time when you perform. Yeah. Uh, you're a real healer in this, uh, in this, in this locale, in this in our in our community, you bring a lot of peace and love and he, and healing and great music to this community. Thank you. That's that's I feel that's my uh, mission on Earth. You know, we're all here for specific things. You know, like we're all part of this gigantic. Book, you know, and we all do what we do because we're the only ones that can do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. even teaching, that was my Emma. I mean. Those kids, they didn't know I was like an old guy. <laughs> I thought yeah. I was one of them, you know? Yeah. Because I, mean, no. I would goof around with them. You know, so, you know yeah. chill out, man. <laughs> you know, like, that's you know, that's a special like, talent. Yeah, you and Joe, and you do that so yeah. honestly and beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, and I'm working them into like doing third grade recorders, you know. I wasn't going to keep them playing hot cross buns for the whole year. You know? <laughs> Great so, tune, though, John. You got to admit, hot cross buns swings. It's lovely. <laughs> got to start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> got a really good rhythm to that song. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I would mess with the rhythm on that. You know, they'd be playing. I was going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> By the end of the year, <laughs> they'd be playing the Charlie Brown music and uh, mm. jam blues, the Duke Ellington tune. Uh, All right. We will yeah. rock you, you know, the Titanic theme. <laughs> yeah, great. Know? And and they got into it, you know, because they knew it was good. Yeah. Oh, Plus, they're, they're having fun. Gift. What a gift for those children. Yeah. Uh, and they've, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, John, we are, uh, we're heading into the last 15 minutes of our show. When Joe, Dave, we get handed over to David to uh, inform us all of the many yeah. things going on around, uh, around town. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just love uh, that you're in our community and that you're performing and that you're doing this on the 14th, uh, May 14th at uh, the Burroughs. Well, yeah, it, it'll be virtual re recorded there, but virtual, yeah, on Facebook, 7 p.m. Right. Um, you know, be there. I want to yeah. I want to thank David and Abby because they, this provides me a home oh. in this area where I can actually do what there I do. Is. You no, know. oh, John. You know you're the you're the resident. Uh, you're the pian pianist and composer in residence. So thank you. We uh, we love you and love what you do. And this will be another great concert. And well, in the fall, we're going to see you back in person. Yes, yeah. can't wait. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, John, we'll be tuning in on, on uh, May 14th, and uh, 
we'll be seeing you around town soon when uh, when the world opens back up and we're all singing in the streets. Yeah, I look forward to it. And you guys are great, Tom and Joe and Sean A back there and Alex. Thank you, Doug. Thank so, you. It's uh, been our pleasure to have you on, John. Thank you. We'll see uh, you in a couple of weeks. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Uh, what a joy. That was what great. What a good guy. What a good guy. Yeah. Man, it's, and just what stories. What stories yeah. he has. Wow. Yeah. We didn't even get around to the accordion part of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, the polka parties. I know. Next, next we'll have to have him back on, you know, on this National Accordion Month. Well, and he's got he's got that gorgeous. I don't know how many he's got, but the one I've seen in concert is one he got through uh, Pete Van Alstine over at Pete's Music, and and it's this gorgeous. I, I want to say it's an Excelsior as the brand, and it's absolutely this this work of art, and it sounds really good yeah, too. It's, uh, they're oh. they're gorgeous. With all the well, keys, I, the enamel, and all that stuff, they're just wow. beautiful instruments. I, I mentioned they get my such a John, bad rap. <laughs> I mentioned my friend John Lemeran, and he goes back, you know, our old band days back in Ohio. Yeah. And one of our friends, a guy named Mark Gerbeck, his father was a well-known regional jazz musician with a jazz trio, and his main axe was a harm, was a, an accordion. Wow. I think he also played piano, but yeah, it was not uncommon in those days for the you know, accordion was hip. It was cool, and, they, and it was one of uh, it was incorporated in the jazz world. And certainly, then later on in the '40s and '50s, and then the '60s when we started discovering Clifton Chenier and some of these oh. people that have been around in Louisiana forever. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You know the re a re uh, integration of of Paul Simon's great uh, Graceland album. Yes. Oh, that was a, that's a one of my favorite kick, kick butt harmonica or uh, uh, accordion. Accordion, Just yeah. New uses that he kind of stole from a lot of the uh, um, uh, Clifton Chenier yeah. and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it's <clears throat> it's it, and oftentimes they are really beautiful instruments. They're just inlaid with so many nice looking. I haven't thought about Clifton in a art. while. I, I I never heard Clifton live, but I heard his son perform in Washington mm -hmm. D.C. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. With the yeah. full Zydeco band, man. Yeah, so mm. much Zydeco just kind of brought accordion back into prominence, and then some of the pop performers like Paul Simon used it in different ways that it hadn't been used for a long time. So yeah, hats off to the accordion. And when we have John back on, yeah. I don't know that there is a National Accordion Month. If there isn't, there should be. There, and something needs yeah. to be done. Well, there's a National Donut Day. There's got to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be a National Harmo uh, Accordion Day. I, I don't know why I keep saying uh, uh, harmonica. I mean, they're two different. I know. Nice. One I, I do the harmonica. I don't yeah, do the yeah. accordion. No, Although I have no. a I have a set of bagpipes I've never played. Oh! If I could just remember that one doesn't fit in your mouth, yeah, you know, right. that would <laughs> that would help, that would be an aid for me. David, what's going on around the world of the arts right now? I, Yuba City and Marysville. More than we have time to talk about, but I, I wanted to ask real quick, Joe. I know you've been working on a recording project. Uh, yes. Where's it at? Um, well, um, I actually the the. Tracks are all mastered, and I have been working on the cover and oh. uh, talking to one of the um, companies that will print discs. And so I've got one more panel to finish. Oh, great. And then I'm sending it off to them, and then when they send it to me, I'm distributing them to all so, of the preschools. So you're going to be able to actually access or get a physical CD? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get a physical CD. Uh, I'm, I'm going to... Because they're all uh, preschool children or preschool wow. songs and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, free to all of the local wow. preschools. And, so, uh, so, Joe, Joe, and for those of you out there who might be uh, tuning in who don't know, Joe is also, a.k.a. Sideshow Joe, uh, who entertains, has been entertaining uh, kids uh, virtually throughout the pandemic and was doing that before at uh, Playzium and uh, other places. Yeah. He's just... Uh, he entertains kids in the most delightful way. Parents love him, uh, and so uh, he had a big audience for what he was doing with Sideshow Joe. And is that uh, what I'm curious about? Um, I, is that what this album is? I thought it was some of your more serious, more adult or no, serious. This, this is a kids album. Sideshow Joe's "A Virus Among Us." Okay, and, and the songs are "Masks," uh, "The Sneeze," "Wash Your Hands." That's oh, all your song, oh, song. Your, original, song. Oh, your original stuff, yeah. Yes, yeah. I I did. I used two um, uh, contemporary songs, uh, music, and and rewrote kind of weird Al Yankovic them. Oh, nice. Uh, so Margaritaville and uh, oh, and uh, uh, Five for Fighting Superman. I changed those, 
which actually the Margaritaville, um, I've changed it in my live show a couple times because I can sing a song about the, whatever preschool I'm at uh, uh -huh. with the Margaritaville song because I love starting it out, you know, da -na 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 -da, and all the parents' heads yeah. immediately go, what? I rewrote it. it away again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. That's so fun. We can't wait to, can't wait to yeah. hear I'm I'm really stoked. I mean, I, I have a um, I started a new job here uh, last month. Yeah. With uh, Calusa County Osaved uh, Education and stuff. I'm working with them and their their preschools. Yeah. And so so yeah. So I had I'm having to put Sideshow Joe on the back burner for a little bit, but uh, but I'll be back. Well, let's have a, let's plan a CD release party. You have a set of arts and culture. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We got a grant to help support the project, so we're right. Good. Anxious to yeah. hear it. So good for you. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we were um, we were talking before the show about the, this weekend was a busy uh, virtual theater weekend. Uh, we uh, showed our our Yubisoto Arts and Culture production of Songs for a New World, uh, directed by our own uh, Alex Cecina. A lot of great local singers. Gay Galvin, music director. Uh, showed that three times. And then at the same time, it's a shame when these things kind of bundle up with each other and conflict. But out at Yuba College, they produced an outstanding production of the Laramie Project. Uh, and this is a, a multi-member cast, uh, basically uh, uh, telling the story of what happened to Matthew Shepard, the gay uh, University of Wyoming student who was murdered in 1998. Kind of heavy stuff, but uh, they handled it beautifully. The materials, it, it was written just a couple of years after the yeah. incident. And uh, just an incredible uh, production. So hats off to James Gilbreth and Joseph Stopman and the whole team at Yuba College for keeping theater alive. The students did it live for all four performances and just did a beautiful job. So we were able to see that. You know, it's easy to be cynical about, I think, uh, virtual events. We've all seen a ton of them. We're all anxious to be live again. We're getting close. We're hoping, uh, you know, later this summer to do some real stuff. And I know everybody is. Uh, but, you know, if you give these virtual programs a chance, uh, often you'll be pleasantly surprised. It can yeah. be, be a pretty pretty uh, powerful experience, particularly when the performers are live like they were at, uh, for Yuba College and the Laramie Project. And it mm -hmm. was just, anyway, beautiful show. Um, so that's going on. And speaking of virtual shows, uh, something coming up with our good friends at the acting company is a show called puffs uh or seven the subtitle is or seven increasingly eventful years at a certain school of magic um uh and it's uh, gonna be fun it's kind of a, a not an outtake but a, a sort of a tribute uh, show if you will uh, to harry potter and all that good magical stuff virtual performances will be streamed online may 28th through june 12th so go to the acting company and and support them. I mean, they've been shut down like we all have for uh, over a year. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, a, I don't know, a couple of bucks to see the show. And I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, directed by Eric, uh, Aaron Watkins and Matt Demerit. And Matt, of course, appeared in our production of Songs for a New World. Tremendous talent. He's now running a the theater program at Marysville Charter Academy for the Arts. Uh, Acting Company is also uh, has brought back live uh, Young People's uh, Magic Theater uh, weekly uh, acting classes. So uh, look at that too. That's our friend, I think, Jeff Graham, isn't it? Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, running youth theater programs uh, for six to 17 year olds. We're usually seven to 14. So he's kind of broadened the age uh, age categories. So so check that out. Um, and again, support the acting company any way you can. Uh, they're an important part of the arts community here. Community theater is uh, vital uh, to what we're all about. Um, uh, all about the arts and culture. It's our uh, bi-weekly uh, interview show. This Tuesday evening, um, we're going to be talking to um, a couple of um, folks involved. In, and Tom, help me uh, with the language here. They are not uh, certified art therapists, but we're going to be speaking about that aspect of art and how it can help with uh, health and uh, wellness and healing as as in our work with veterans. Um, uh so those, uh, the two individuals, Diane Davis um, is involved in dance as a therapeutic art form. And then Indy McCarthy is a woman we've collaborated with along with our friends at Vet Art to talk about um, uh, veterans who have gotten involved in the arts as part of their uh, healing process. Joe, you were part of that great virtual pop-up yep. 
Cafe, telling your story, your time in service, how art and you know theater, music, visual art, poetry, songwriting has meant so much to you um, uh, in your life. And anyway, it'll be a great conversation this Tuesday, Artist Alchemy, 4 p.m., Yuba Sutter Arts Facebook and also YouTube uh, channel. Uh, and then uh, on the 5th, I think that's Wednesday, uh, our, our poet laureate, Marcella Hernandez Castillo, uh, at 5 o'clock, will be uh, talking to some of his uh, uh, poets, friends from around the country. Uh, another great uh, conversation. Uh, followed on Thursday by Tom Galvin, who uh, hosts our, uh, our monthly open mic spoken word uh, poetry and prose event. Um, so much going on. Now, for that one, that's live interaction. So go to our website, pick up the link to Zoom. It's a Zoom type call. Tom will host and anybody can chime in and share any of your original uh, written work. So um, anyway, that's it for the next uh, two weeks. But one other big thing, talking about supporting the arts. Uh, art galleries have been closed uh, for the last year, like theaters have been. And um, uh, one of the things Yuba Sutter Arts and Culture has done to try to support uh, visual artists and this includes ceramic artists, you know, sculptors, as well as painters, uh, is to host uh, our online art auctions. So please uh, go to the yubasutterarts.org website, uh, look for the art auction link. It doesn't cost you anything to look. And just, it's like a virtual art gallery experience. I went through the entire collection. There's like 50 pieces this time, 25, 26 different artists. Uh, they were each... Um, asked to submit two pieces. So I think it's 25 and 50. And I was just blown away. And it's, you know, they're wide, uh, wide range of uh, price points. Uh, some of the higher end stuff may not be, uh, you know, readily accessible for some of us mortals, but you sure as heck can look at it and see some beautiful, beautiful work. But many items, I think I'll categorize as affordable. Uh, and, you know, Mother's Day is coming up next weekend. Why not, you know, give a give an original work of art? So look at the look at the art auction. Uh, if you can, you know, make a bid or buy it now, there is a buy it now option at a set price. Um, we uh, we pass through uh, the money to the artist. Uh, we keep a couple percent just to pay the auction uh, uh, program company uh, for facilitating this. So um, live art, uh, not live, but art auction at ubisetterarts.org. Check it out and enjoy the art, if nothing else, and uh, make a bid or buy a piece if you can. So cool. Uh, last but not least, uh, don't forget Homebody's Porch Portraits. Our own Sue Grau is still doing uh, free portraits of you and your family outside, socially distanced, uh, to be part of a project that will be shared later this uh, later this year. You, of course, get to get a digital file. You can come out, pose any way you like, with or without costumes, with or without signs, with or without pets and children, any way you like it. So uh, go to... Um, Porch Portraits 2021 at gmail.com or just call the Arts Council 742 Arts and we'll get you connected to Sue and be part of that community uh, art project. So that's what's going on uh, for this uh, two week uh, segment. Hey, um, if you get a chance to go down Pluma Street, uh, they're putting the stars, the donor stars in the in the sidewalk in front of the Sutter Theater this week. Oh, so they're pouring cool. the concrete Very and cool. stuff. We're going to have our own little uh, uh, Grauman's Chinese theater style at the cool. very, very, very pretty. Fun. Yeah, fun. I know. I was, I was so excited. You're going to be out there casting your hands and feet, Joe? Come on. I, I, no, I'm hoping nobody else does either. Well, not the, the real ones, maybe, but we'll sneak, we'll sneak these... there at night when Glenn's sleeping and we'll pour some kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would kill us. <laughs> well, I, I, that uh, we need to talk a little lot more about what's going on with the Sutter Theater next time because that's yeah. an exciting story all by itself. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, next next month or next month, there should be a, there should be a, the, a lot more story to tell. Mm -hmm. Good, and it, it good. should be yeah, it's going to be exciting. I'm I am stoked. Um, I did I helped get the the stars out of storage in the back of the building and out to the front, and it was so neat. We laid them out in a fake pattern or a, the pattern. Yeah, and I was just—I mean, it made it. I was feeling it. I mean, I could yeah, feel the yeah. emotion and stuff. What a great project, and it's finally right. coming to it. You put a lot close. into it. Just yeah. once again, thanks to thanks to uh, John Paris for joining yes. us today. And May fourteenth, virtual. Go to Yuba Sutter Arts Facebook page. You can access it there, and uh, you will be uh, very highly entertained. Yes. Is there like a ten dollar donation or something like that? No, or no just, absolutely free. This is free, so you're getting a gift. You're getting a gift uh, that Indeed. 
Donations are always welcome, though, at yubasodorts.org. Yeah, <laughs> the work we do. But yeah. this is totally free to the community. So, Gentlemen, you, all right. See you next right. time. Good Look show. Together. Thanks, everybody. Take Good care, night. everybody.